Welcome back to another another episode of No Ordinary Woman, where we recognize and celebrate women of all ages and all stages. I'm Fiona Briffer, and I've got Monica, Dr. Monica, back with me again this week to talk to us more about, well, Monica shared her story last week about um, her journey, but she's a specialist in mums and new mums in business. And I wanted Monica to, to come back and talk to us more about what are some of the obstacles that young mums and even older mums are facing at the moment and how can we help them overcome some of those? So thanks so much for coming back, Monica. Thank you for having me back, Fiona. <laughs> you are very welcome. Well, let's kick into it. Now, I really wanted to just ask you, because you're coaching a lot of young mums, um, mums that are starting businesses, but just mums in general, what are the most common things that you're coming across that mums are struggling with or um, needing help with at the moment? Yeah, so, um, yeah, thank you, Fiona. So I do coach uh, mums who are in that space of transition. And we know as women, we go through many, um, you know, many se different seasons in life, yeah? So we get married and we might um, choose to start a family a few years or immediately, whatever it, it may look like. But I think a lot of moms also find themselves in this space where they become moms and they might um, have decided to take a year off work, whatever that might look like for them, whether they are in a corporate setting or um, something else. Yeah. They will, you know, they will take that one year off and, you know, have the best of intentions to stay home with their newborn. Yeah. But what I find is in that space of one year, a lot of things change for them, mm. um, which is only natural. We've you know, gone through this you know, life-changing space and journey. So it also changes the person that we are. Yeah. And whether it is, you know, we become, um, you know, we obviously become more maternal um, yes. along the way, but we also start to, two things I find that's the most common is yes. we lose ourselves. We almost yes. don't remember ourselves pre-child, yeah, uh, pre-kids, and the second one is almost this um, identity crisis. Like mm. you, you know, we we start to feel really quite stuck because our identity used to be once mm. um, so strongly associated with the work that we do. Yes. So I shared this yeah. with you in our last chat last week. Mm. Um, you know, that I was a medical practitioner of 12, almost 13 years. Yeah. And I had my second child stayed mm. home with her for the one year. Yeah. And that was when things started to change for me. You yeah. know, I wasn't sure if my medical career was going to be the, the career for me, yeah. which I knew it was 12 years prior because yeah. that was all I knew. Mm. And my identity was so set in that career. So yeah. I find this to be true in a lot of the women that I work with, with moms. Mm -hmm. And in that space of transition, they, they want to, you know, um, find themselves again. Yeah. And secondly, a lot of moms do find, um, you know, themselves thinking about how can they still do something they love? How can mm -hmm. they support their family in, in the, you know, in the finance um, side of things? but also be that mom that is present for their children. Yeah, that's a really good point. And I, I, I spoke to a lady, like if you watched a couple of videos back, Emma Lovell, who was transitioning when she was transitioning from um, being a stay-at-home mom back into, um, back into work. But she was talking about just exactly what you were saying but the expectations that had changed and the what I thought I wanted to do and what I want to do and how do I do it and should I be, be doing it and all those things that you question yourself about. And I think that yeah. mums kind of feel guilty about as well. It's like, should I go back to work full time yeah. or is that bad? Should I be, um, is it bad that I want to go back to full work full time? And and I was one of those mothers that was like, I was a better mother not being a full-time mother yeah. and going and, and working a little, uh, working part-time, which I ended up working full-time just because I had to. But um, I felt guilty. Like it, it's kind of like you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. Mm. You need to feel guilty yeah. about every choice that you make. Yeah. And you do, I think that's part of losing your identity and all that mm. because you're so focused on being whatever your kids need, whatever, you know, all of those other things that you forget who you want to be. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's a, it can be a space where women can sit in for a 
for a while yeah. because you know you're still mothering in the background yes. but you're not actually and, and this is the other thing that I find uh, Fiona is sometimes you know as moms you know you're a new mom mm. you are expected to fully enjoy that space mm. and I get it you know and, and and some mothers fall into it naturally others take a bit of time but you're right that expectation yeah that you know you you're meant to be home with your children you know yeah. or if you've decided to yes. say quit a job yeah. and you find yourself um looking after your child and maybe yeah. six months in you go you know oh, what this is isn't actually me. what I want <laughs> yes then you almost feel this burden you can't yes. actually let anyone Change know your mind that's you, you sit in that space yeah. and you go oh my goodness like yeah. You know, if someone knows that I actually want to do something outside of this, how is that going to be perceived? Yeah, that's a great point. And I think that um, what you think is going to happen when you have kids and what mm -hmm. actually happens mm -hmm. is more often than not two very different things because you don't know also what sort of child you have. Some mm -hmm. people have these expectations and then they might have a sick child or they might be sick. Or mm -hmm. for myself, I had postnatal depression really severely after I had my um, first and my second, but it was worse with my first. Yeah. And I was completely incapable of being the superwoman that I thought I was going to be. And then yeah. I crashed and burned as a result because I'm like, oh, yeah. I, the, everything that I thought was going to happen did not happen. It all came crashing down around my ears. So there's that whole working out, like just being able to readjust your expectations of yourself, your child and your life. So there's those three different sections, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So when we know that there are a lot of common things that that mothers um, experience when they have babies and, and their young children, there's the uncertainty, the guilt, the yeah. what do I do, who am I, all of that sort of stuff. What is the the pathway out of that? So what do you normally um, give as a strategy for mums that are just in that, I don't know who I am and I don't know what to do? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. so when when mums come to me in that space, yeah. I firstly help them to just relax. Yes. And, you know, just, it's okay. Perfect. It's common. These are common feelings that mm -hmm. mothers feel. You are not alone. So I think sometimes all they really need is some reassurance that it is common. Yeah. And they are not, you know, um, having these feelings and they're not the only one. Yeah. So I think a lot of it, you know, I spent at least a good one session, a full solid session, just, yeah. you know, reassuring them. Um, yeah. There's so much changing changes going on, not just within their body. And, you know, you've got this new person to care for, or, yeah. you know, the next kid or the next kid, but your relationship with the world has also yes. changed. Yeah. You know, you're obviously more protective of your children. Your, your concept of relationships have changed, changed. Maybe even your marriage has changed, you know, yeah. and we know with children, our relationships change. So mm. um, there's a lot of, um, firstly, you know, to help them just get past that. Yeah. Then once we get past that, you know, I, I often get them to um, almost do like a visioning vision board or I walk them through a like a vision, a mindset space yeah. Yeah. where we, you know, we think about things that they are good at, yeah. things that they might, you know, maybe it's just this niggle of a dream that they have. Mm, yeah. You know, what is it that you've been, you know, thinking about that you might like to do but you know you haven't quite even spoken it out yeah and you know when you speak a dream it's mm. a lot it, you know it's a lot more real and yeah. a lot of my clients don't share their dreams they yeah. don't they're just so fearful especially my moms because yeah. they almost feel like nope I'm, I might have to wait a year till my yeah. child turns one there's something magical that happens when our <laughs> child turns one yeah. some moms even tell me I have to wait till my child turns one it gives me the permission yep. to now explore myself oh, right. yeah which I really feel quite sad when I hear mm. about that because why why is that yeah. one year what happens yeah. at one year yeah who Again, where did that label come from? Like who it, told us that? I know that we have um, societal beliefs and stuff like that, but where did the one year rule come? Yeah. Yeah. It is it is the expectation. It's yeah. the societal expectation. Yeah. Maternity leave is for yeah, 12 months. True. So we kind of almost, you know, put the deadline. Yeah, there's a deadline at 12 months. That's, at yeah. 11 months, I get a lot of clients within that 10 to 12 months 
or once they get into like the second, third year when, you know, the uh, child is going to school. That's yeah. another milestone yep. where a lot of mothers start to think, okay, what, what next for me? Now I, I have my life kids. back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's interesting because I get them at these points more so. Mm. But um, yeah, so I, I, I walk them through, you know, just bringing them back to themselves. Mm. What were you good at? What do you enjoy? Yeah. And when I ask the question, what do you enjoy? I usually get mom saying, oh yeah, I enjoy taking my kids to the park. No, no, no. What do, yeah, what do you, you enjoy? enjoy? Yeah. What do you as a person? Yeah. You were first a woman yeah. before you were a mother. Yeah. You know, you were first, you know, um, someone with interests, with values, with beliefs. Hopes and dreams. Exactly. Mm. And, and I'm guilty for it, Fiona. Yeah. I was that person, you know, yeah. I forgot who I was. And yes. I really, I worked with a life coach myself yeah. to get myself out of that funk and, you know, just get, get myself dreaming again, because I'm yeah. a visionary. I yeah. dream big and I, you know, I don't think about next week. I think mm. about two years down. Yeah. But in that space of motherhood. You had a ton of vision ooh, for the baby. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. My Which vision okay. was. Yeah, it's okay. And I think it's part of the, the whole maternal instincts kicking in that we do get that tunnel vision yes. down to the baby. But also I think that um, legacy of beliefs from older generations where you have to be a certain way, you have to think a certain way. We need to start shaking that off. Yeah. And yeah. we need to start going, do you know, you know how, to, how to do this, ladies watching? Your way. Yes. You just have to do it your way. That's the only rule because you don't know every single mother is different. Every single baby is different. Every mother and baby has um, different needs. And it's not just babies, but like you said, some women get to, I'll wait until my kids start school. And then they're like, okay, my kids have started school. Mm. Now who am I? And what do, I know I'm a taxi driver and a nurse and a conflict resolution Mm. expert. And uh, who am I and that's then when they start going oh my gosh yeah yeah absolutely and you know I and and once we we do that exercise it just Mm. gets them and look you know I always tell them don't you know this is not the end all be all just because say you have a dream to write a book yeah doesn't mean you have to write a book in the next six months it doesn't mean so yes you are in a very um you know busy season of your life but you know nothing happens overnight you know so having the vision is one thing it just gives you a sense of direction and then we start to put little things in place and and i think you know part of the process is i um you know i often tell my my clients this you know when you do something it Mm. actually helps you bring bring yourself alive yeah you know and then action exactly Yeah. Yeah. yeah and then you know when you feel alive yes you can then take that little yep. next step and the little next step. So- that is absolutely spot on because, as you know, as a coach, you know that when people are feeling unmotivated, it's because yeah. they haven't been engaged in that particular thing for a while. So every little step of action you take towards that thing actually feeds the motivation of yeah. getting back into it. It's that whole you don't use it, you lose it. Yeah. Thing. So the more you re-engage back in those passions, and I think you're right, is that women, after we've had kids, we kind of feel like we've got to pour everything into there and we don't dare to dream and we don't dare to be selfish and we don't dare to do all those other things. So asking those questions, what makes you happy? What do you love doing? Mm. And getting women to re-engage, first of all, in self-care and what we think is selfish really isn't because mm. you at your best self then is yeah. the best mother and the best yeah. partner and the best whatever out in the community. So it's yeah. re-engaging back in your dreams, your hopes, your passions. And like you said, even just thinking about it and doing yeah. a vision board or something mm. reignites that spark. Yeah to start stepping towards yeah Yeah. and I've seen it I've honestly I've seen my mothers come alive just by you know just speaking their dreams out and just putting one or two images in front of them so I have moms on you know like weight loss journey who wants to you know they're again it's that whole self-care looking after yourself you have moms I have moms who are you know um doing a whole career shift and trying to build a business so, you know, it's, it's any aspect really, yeah. but it's finding the path that you want to walk in. You know, again, you said, like you said, Fiona, it's, it's very individual, you know, yes. each mom, each child, each family looks different. Again, each 
even their support systems look different. And yes. that's again going to change everything. Yeah. You know, true. some families have a lot of support and yep. you can, um, you know, you can leave your child, you can go attend workshops and yeah. seminars. Whereas I'll have some moms who just don't yeah. have anyone. And yeah. so how do you, you know, how do, and, and, and that's where people get stuck as well. Now yeah. I want to do this, but I can't because I yeah. can't get to it. Yeah. Thankfully, exactly. with all that's happening now, there mm. we, you know, we have been spoiled for choice. Yes. Like, you know, we have so many online programs and yeah. coaches and whatnot. You can yeah. engage courses pretty much you know anything and everything yeah. in the online space as yeah. well so that's really helped I think that's a really good point too but I, I also think like as a mother my my oldest is 27 my youngest is 24 I am so glad that there was no Facebook or Instagram mm -hmm. when I had my kids because I already felt bad enough about how <laughs> how good or bad I was doing without seeing how well everybody else was doing yeah, yeah. I I cannot imagine the pressure on mums these days when yeah. they're seeing everybody's highlight reel while their kids are all covered in snot in the corner <laughs> and she's in another corner with a bottle of wine rocking backwards and forwards like that was my life um, but I didn't get to see everybody else being all perfect and the yeah. Instagram first birthdays and you know yeah. I'm like oh my gosh yeah. that is way too much pressure to put on yourself yeah how yeah. much of a role is that playing in mums oh huge yeah massive 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 because yeah. um and you know again it's that whole like i think we keep looking left and right we yeah. forget that this is our lane and this yeah. is this is our story this is our journey and yeah. we are all so unique and yeah. yes we do get caught up in that space of comparison and you know just looking yeah. at other mothers other moms and other families yeah. and how they do it i think it's really and you know, there's there's no right or wrong way right. to do it. I think you just got to um, just exercise some self control, and that's yeah. me. I mean, personally, that's what I do. I help my moms do it. I, you know, when you're planning that first birthday, yeah. don't go onto Instagram unless you yeah. really want to execute a twenty thousand dollar birthday party. <laughs> and you know what? It, and that's it, okay. <laughs> and that is absolutely that was our, what I was gonna say, Fiona. Yeah. I mean, I have friends who've yeah. done it. Yeah, yes. And that is completely and absolutely fine. But if that is not your way, yeah, please don't feel the pressure to do it that exactly. way. You and know? I used to, as a woman, that one of our uh, biggest challenges, I think women compare themselves to other people so much. And we don't focus on all of our attributes and our strengths and our passions. We're so busy looking at other women's and what they're yeah. good at that we're not good at that we forget yeah. what we're good at that they're not good at. Yeah. So I used to look at my sister. Now, when I had my little kids and, I, and when mine were about four and uh, four and two, I was a single mum. So I'm, I'm got divorced and so I had to work full time and so my kids parties were oh well if if I manage you can bring five people to McDonald's that's it they they supply the cake they supply the entertainment and then I'd look when my sister had kids and she would organize these amazing parties and I would just think oh my poor kids I was rubbish but I realized that they're her organizing and entertainment and hospitality and all that's her gift it wasn't yeah. until way later I spent a good 10 years thinking I was rubbish until I realized that's just not my gift. My gift, yeah. I used to get and play obstacle courses with my kids in the playgrounds and do all that sort of stuff. So they didn't suffer. They yeah. did, didn't have the greatest, most fancy birthdays. But I think the message to women is don't compare yourself to what somebody else is doing. And that's mm -hmm. where Instagram and Facebook is a bit of a nightmare because you were, and you're only seeing their highlight reel. Yeah. Do you, and your child isn't going to remember its first birthday, first of all, but your child is going to remember um, the time you spend with them on the floor in your jammies and just yeah. playing and all that sort of stuff. Not, not yeah. the other stuff. It's like, absolutely be your best self for them. And take the pressure off yourself I think is a message in all this from what you're what yeah. you're saying that you're dealing with mums is first of all just remember who you are yeah. embrace what makes you happy as well and it's not selfish to take care of yourself because it makes you better to be able to manage your kids without losing it and re-engage and remember and write down and visualize your hopes and dreams and passions and goals whether it be for that milestone that you said after the kid's first birthday for some reason or when they go to school or when they leave for university yeah. don't wait that long <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but it, there is no right or wrong time is there yeah. 
yeah that's yeah. just your All right or wrong one and look it's such a balancing act as well like you know um personally i when i felt you know i initially started coaching without really knowing what coaching looked like yeah. and um you know when i was told that you know i really should be coaching because i'm good at it yeah and uh, i got myself qualified with different qualifications yeah. and when i was ready to actually call myself a coach and yeah. this is going back four and a half years now mm. and decided to let my uh, medical practice know that you know i'm not coming back full time i'll do the occasional sessions yeah it it really was an interesting space because mm -hmm. for me, it was a decision that obviously didn't happen overnight. Firstly, mm -hmm. it took a lot of thought process intention, mm -hmm. yeah. but it also took, um, you know, me coming back to my why, why am yeah. I choosing this path as yeah. opposed to going back to a job yeah. that was comfortable. I was yeah. trained for, I worked in for 12 years. Yeah. I make that change. Yeah. The reason being is I wanted to firstly still contribute to my family. Yes. I am a driven person. I love serving people. Yeah. I love that aspect of, you know, um, being able to do that, mm. but I also wanted to be there for my children. Yeah. So my why was the flexibility, yes. the being available, and mm. and is that is that um you know am I doing it a hundred percent right these yeah. days? Yeah. No, I can yeah. tell you there are some <laughs> uh, you know there are some things at school that happens yeah. in the daytime yeah, yeah. despite working from home for myself. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't, I'm not there. Yeah, and I still have to you know let my child know mm. that I'm so sorry, sweetie. I have a meeting that I really have to yeah. be on. Yeah. And, you know, there is no right or wrong. And that I don't think that guilt will ever leave us moms. <laughs> yeah. But we learn how to manage it. Yes, exactly. And we, yeah. you know, we learn how to communicate. And I think that's the most important. Communicate your, your thoughts, your yeah. dreams, your passions yeah. with your children, with your yes. spouse, with the people around you. Mm. You know, don't, and, and this is something, you know, I, I always tell my mothers, mm. don't, feel like you need to do this all on your own yes you know yes we've become mothers yes now we are nurturing we are in, stepping into a different yeah. role yeah. but our spouses don't know that we have big dreams yeah. unless we communicate that yeah yeah our children yeah. don't know that we would we would love to build a business yeah. unless we communicate that yeah that's great i love that it really yeah. is important to talk to your kids about stuff that's going on and and telling them that you know sometimes you're scared and sometimes you make mistakes is essentially giving them permission to be the same it's giving them permission to well if mum's scared sometimes it's okay for me to be scared sometimes yeah. if mum's trying even though like she's having difficulties it means that I can do that too and it gives them a really good role model yeah. to, to grow up with like your your good times your bad times but communicating that and being completely vulnerable and open and honest with your kids as well is really important so yeah, I, yeah that's a really good point I like that mm. um but yeah I guess at the end of it um the the purpose of this was to just talk about and normalize just the uncertainty around being a mum and transitioning into motherhood and then not that you ever go out but I mean back out into the workplace and trying to balance that mm -hmm. time of being with your kids and, and being a working mum is that yes I think that's a good point the guilt never really goes away but we learn to manage it and we learn to manage it by telling ourselves what a great role model we're being what we are doing right because we're always going to be doing something wrong Let's focus see. on what we're doing right because our brain is going to go wherever we allow it to go so we can send it down the negativity path or we can send it down the positivity path so let's reassure the positive side that yes but we're doing this right and this great and we've got this and I am this I am that I am this instead of yeah. I'm not I'm not I'm exactly. not yeah so yeah. I think that's really great and yes ladies who are watching there is no right or wrong way to do your version of life everybody you might look at Mary Jo I don't know why she's Mary Jo but you might look at Mary <laughs> down the road and go she's doing this this and this it's like yeah but she's got a completely different set of skills yeah. she's got a completely different child she's got a completely mm. different purpose in this life so don't watch what she's yeah. doing just go do what you're doing yeah exactly yeah. and be 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 okay to fail your way forward into mm -hmm. it it's like I don't know what I'm doing um and quite honestly I'm 50 half the time I still don't know what I'm doing I'm just winging it <laughs> as I go along sometimes like oh yeah this is going really well and then uh when it's not change yeah 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, cool. Well, Monica, thank you so much once again for coming back and sharing your wisdom and your experiences and and um, helping the women and mums out there that are looking going, what the, what do I do? <laughs> is I, I want to take it back to Monica's first point, and that is, first of all, you are okay. Yes. You're doing great. Just embrace where you are, how you are, and don't overthink it. Is that the first Absolutely. step one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Oh, fantastic. Thank you, Monica. And, and as usual, if you've got any comments um, or questions, feel free to leave them below. But I'll also leave Monica's details in the description. So if you are looking for a little bit of extra help, she obviously is more than happy to um, connect with you as well. So thank you again. Thank you, Monica. Most and <laughs> thank you for watching another episode of No Ordinary Woman. And if you missed Monica's interview and her story about how she transitioned from doctor to life coach, you can watch the um, video in the previous episode. But for now, we will catch you next time. Bye, Bye for now.